Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. Today we're reviewing the BMW M240, the performance car of choice for the broke, tight-fisted, skint, bastard, just like me. Hang on a minute. Okay, let's move on to exterior styling, guys. Now, the side profile of this car, in my opinion, is pretty beautiful. The rear end of it is a little bit compressed compared to the front and bonnet of the car where it's a normal kind of proportions, but it still looks good. There are not many styling kind of cues, if you like, on the side of this. They've kept it quite plain beyond the little gray kind of um, wing mirrors and the, the M Sport alloys, if you like. Now, the rear end of this car is the bit that I think looks its best. The tail lights, a bit of a tribute to the old E46 models and some of the older BMWs where you've got the little inner chin part, but it kind of flows a bit better. The proportions are all good. The only thing on the M240 that perhaps isn't at its best is the lower gray plastic valance, which looks like a plank of gray wood. Perhaps they're saving the best style for the top of the line kind of M2 range, and they've kept that quite simple. The exhaust tips as well, very simple black painted kind of mild steel or whatever it is a bit uninspiring but let's not be negative because the rear of the car I think looks lovely and beautiful on this and I love the little bulge of the rear arches and the the lines of the car generally the front of the car is perhaps the weakest view of all three they say the same about me um, <laughs> the headlights are a bit thin uh, it looks a bit art deco and the lines look a little bit sharp and that's the only part of the car that I think won't age perhaps quite as well so as always with BMWs, there tends to be one weak angle. The weak angle perhaps is the front, but the side and the rear are a success. What do you think on the exterior styling? Next up, interior styling. BMW always kind of play it quite safe on their interiors. Not much changes with exception to their latest G-Series models where they're really going high-tech Audi-esque. Historically, um, BMW interiors are quite plain. This LCI 2 model, which is the latest and greatest facelifted, all the little bug fixes, updates or iteration of the car, has um, a slightly improved dashboard without the Art Deco curves and lines. It also has this semi-digital um, you know, instrument panel, speed dial, whatever you want to call it, which isn't an improvement on the the old the old one that was in there. In fact, you know, the further back you go with BMWs, the better the instrument panels are. The modern digital ones, to me, are a bit like playing Forza 2 on the PlayStation. Personally, not so interested in that, but it's okay. This BMW steering wheel, which is a really important um, part of the car, is about the right size. This car that's done 30,000 miles, the only thing I'd say with these... M Sport steering wheels is they start to soften a little bit and the bonded leather starts to scratch, uh, stretch a little bit so you can feel a bit of give when you grip it tightly uh, when you're panicking. And the gear, gear knob gets a little bit worn as well but I'll probably replace that. Uh, the only other thing I don't like about these F-Series BMW interiors is the thick embossment pattern on these leather seats. I think it, it feels slightly rubbery, doesn't feel like it's nice smooth leather that's to do with the finish more than the quality of the leather um, and i think bmw have improved that recently and it's one thing that i'm not overly keen um, that embossment pattern is also used in the door cards the vinyl door card cover and the dashboards and it's it's okay it's not too bad i'd give it a solid seven out of ten in this interior okay guys we're off let's start with price if you want to get one of these well second hand you can pick them up Bottom of market M240 for maybe 16 to 70 grand as of April 2021 when I shoot this. Unless you're Buck Rogers from the future watching it 10 years down the line. If you're going to go with a dealership, you're probably talking about north of 20 grand. Now with the M240, you also have the standard M240 and then the LCI2 model, which is what I'm in here with the upgraded shadow edition type interior styling and dashboard that we talked about earlier on. So you'll pay a little bit more for that. That's the price, so let's say 17 through to about 22,000, something roughly like that. Now next up, the cool thing about the M240 is this engine which delivers its power so smoothly. And I'm in second gear, it's just gonna take a second. Now it's in the zone, now it's talking. It is so powerful, the engine, and so smooth. And it has all that torque quite early on in the mid-ranges. So 
a lot of the older BMW engines were known for really being high revving and like like the, the S54 in the E46 M3, that metallic rasp and like getting all that power in the high rev zone. Well, unfortunately with this, most of the power is somewhere down in the mid range, which does lose from that little bit of sensation of really ringing the engine out and it's sort of crescendoing as, as you rev higher. It's not quite like that, but it's really pleasurable and it's smooth. So the B58 engine is fantastic. Six cylinder, three liter, twin, twin scroll, twin scroll turbo that delivers around 335 brake horsepower and about 500 newton meters of torque and a nought to 60 time of around about, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, about 4.8 for the manual version, a little bit quicker, I don't know, 4.5, 4.6 for the, for the automatic DCT uh, gearbox, flappy paddle thing. Right, so that's the engine covered, really nice. Okay, tyres. This car comes with the Michelin Pilot Super Sports, which were discontinued, I believe. Anybody knows why, put in the comments. But I found they were a bit inconsistent with their wear rate. That being said, they're quite a capable tyre when you get them on track and you get them warmed up. They will stick reasonably well. Just that question marks about the wear rate and the rubber on them for me. Um, big fan of Michelin's though, so I'll probably go with the Pilot Sport 4s with, with this car, or I'll try some other ones. But it does show a good intent that they come with a Michelin performance tyre like that. The alloys, um, the M Sport 18 inch alloys still look lovely. I like the style of these and I wouldn't, you know, a lot of people are into changing the alloys on the cars. I wouldn't bother. I think they suit the car well. So the next thing, braking guys. This has got the M Sport brakes on it, the F series. If they've got those blue calipers, you know, they've got the up upgraded brakes and the vented discs. Um, now the stock pads that come with BMW, we all know about these, a lot of, you know, Reg, Lewis and Mark have all had M140s, I've had an M140, and we've all run stock BMW pads, and as long as they're relatively new and you've got more meat on the pads, they can survive track use, as long as you're not going nuts, you know, and doing really long sessions. It's when they get below 50% that they can't dissipate the heat so well, which is similar to most pads, so you could upgrade with a harder compound that could take more heat. You could also upgrade the, um, brake fluid so there's less risk of that your pedals going off as well but I would give the BMW brakes that come with this car a solid 7 or 8 out of 10 they're not extreme performance like you'll get on the M cars but they're not bad um, next up suspension and here we hit one of the first foibles or problems with this car now the stock suspension is very very stiff on German roads or roads which are well made, that wouldn't be a problem. In fact, it'd be probably quite a nice suspension setup. On UK roads which are very bumpy and unpredictable, poorly maintained, lots of camber, lots of uneven road, lots of worn out tarmac. Um, what I find when you get bumpy road, you get a lot of this bouncing turbulence, like the suspension is <laughs> like overinflated basketball balls in each corner, really bouncing you around and kicking back. And it can be a bit unpleasant. Now. On track, that suspension is absolutely fine. It's not overly sprung too stiff. The only problem is always when you go to track, you want more extremities, is there's a little bit too much body roll for me. So in summary, the, tr the, the suspension is too stiff and too bouncy for UK roads and a little bit too much roll for pure track use, but it is far from a disaster. And I've heard it being criticized quite strongly, but I would just say it's not too bad. For the rest of the world, in the UK, it's okay, it's a little bit bumpy, and I'm gonna do a U turn here. <laughs> Oi. Okay. What? Okay. Whoop, whoop. Chance to do another pull. Oh, yes. Oh, car coming, nice and safe. Next up, related to the suspension, the differential, the main piece of criticism that comes with this car. We have plenty of power with this car. We have a sp stiff, sporty suspension setup that some people might find a bit too brutal on UK roads. But the standard BMW open differential is a bit of a problem on this car. 
Now, funny enough, when you have good grip and you're trying to drive the car quickly around a track, the differential isn't too bad. It's what happens when it breaks traction, which is a problem with this diff. Um, you know, the open diff is putting that power down evenly to both to both rear wheels, even if one of the rear wheels loses traction, starts spinning, and that's the problem with the open diff. And it's actually in road conditions where you're going full tilt, and the road isn't quite even, or you've got a bit of mud, you know, on the edge of the road that you catch with one tire, where the diff and the amount of power that is on this car can catch you out. And obviously having an open diff is no good if you like doing donuts and stuff like that. So a lot of people say, well, you can just upgrade the diff on this car. Yes, you can. You know, put an M Sport diff, you know, a BMW diff on it, sorry, a limited slip diff, or a Quaif or something like that. The problem is when you start throwing lots of money at these cars, when you upgrade your suspension, you upgrade your brakes, you upgrade your differential, you start putting carbon fiber plastic bits on it, you're suddenly very quickly close to um, M2 money, aren't you? That's the big problem with doing anything to this car. You're gonna make it, in theory, you can make it similar to an M2, but with a B58 engine, which wouldn't be a bad thing, but you wouldn't have the same wide front subframe, would you, and setup and all that. It wouldn't look as good. So I think you don't buy these cars to spend loads of money on them to make them like M2s. If you want that limited slip diff, and you'll know if you do or not, then buy an M2. If you just want power and a cheaper car that could be half the price of the M2 Comp, you go with this one. The next thing, guys, on this car that also gets criticised is the electric steering rack. You do lose something with a fully electric rack rather than the hydraulic rack. You lose some of that feedback, so it's another numbing sensation, like when they take away the fly-by-wire throttle that the E36 has to an electronic actuated pedal. When you put in electronics between you and feeling the car, there's a numbing of, of what you feel, that feedback. And that is a problem with this electric rack, that you don't get the feedback. But it's nice, it's well weighted and it's accurate, so you do kind of forget about it after a while when you've driven the car. But when you go back to a hydraulic rack, you will like it more in my opinion. So that's another criticism. Another cool thing about this car, guys, is the curb weight is around 1,550 kilos. So it's lighter than like its three series F series or four series F series counterparts, the 340 or the um, 440 or the, the F series M3 and M4, which are a lot heavier. I think when you start getting above 1,500 kilos, gotta go for a little blip here, a little burn. When you get above 1,500, you're getting into heavy car territory and a coupe should be light. One criticism of modern cars is that with all these extra features and electronics and everything like that, they got heavier and heavier and heavier and I think the automotive industry could have really made them lighter and lighter and lighter if it really wanted to. You look at like the old E36 and you can, it's not uncommon to get those like down to like, you know, 1250 kilos, which is a big difference in weight. So. 1550 is okay, it's about as heavy as I would have gone. It's one of the main strengths of this car. Another cool thing about this car is the economy. You can stick it in the old man mode, <laughs> but no one, no petrol head ever uses the eco mode on this car. The eco mode for a petrol head is comfort mode. <laughs> but you can stick this in eco mode and get around 45 to 50 miles to the gallon, depending on your right foot action and your rollage and your dip in the clutch and all that, or whatever, roughly. If you drive it normally in, in comfort mode, you'll probably get, end up somewhere between 20 and 30. And if you're a lunatic like me, you'll end up with something closer to like 12 miles to the gallon. <laughs> now, carrying on from, from the different modes, eco mode is just the towing a tree behind you or something it feels like, but you save loads of money. Who wants that? Comfort is just like the mode that it goes in when you forget that you want to drive it in another mode. Sport seems irrelevant to me because there's a sport plus mode. And whenever there's a plus mode, <laughs> over a normal sport mode, you're always gonna go for the most insane setting. So, sports plus is a setting that I'll use a lot of the time, but the main difference with these settings is the level of interference, I believe, from the traction control. It also plays around with the throttle response and how it delivers power. It's more linear, I think, in the Sport Plus mode compared to the Comfort mode. Um, but 
the thing is, all of these modes, Comfort, Sport and Sport Plus, have one annoying feature that you can't turn off, and that is the rev matching. Look at this blipping of the throttle when I drop it down to third. It doesn't always do it, actually. It does it when you're genuinely decelerating at a certain level. So watch now, watch now. No, it didn't do it. That's bizarre, hold on a second. I'm still trying to figure this car out. It'll do it in a minute. Right, I'm in third gear. Jesus, concentrate, John. This traffic's whizzing by. Third gear, and I'm gonna downshift a second now. Okay, accelerate, slow down, downshift. Where's the blipping? That, oh, maybe because I'm in, I'm low on fuel. I'm in the fuel reserve, I bet you that's what it is. But normally, so I'm learning about this car as well. When you first start the car, it doesn't do the blipping of the throttles, but I think, because I'm low on fuel, it's not blipping the, the throttle, you tell me. Normally when you downshift, it blips the throttle and that really annoys me and you can't get rid of it. It's, I think it's in Comfort, Sport and Sport Plus and no way of turning it off. Now there is one savior to this car, guys, and that is the secret Rambo mode. If you press the, the traction control or the DSC off button and hold it down, it goes into full DSC off mode, which turns the throttle match blipping thing off. Yay! Now, DSC off mode is fantastic because it also turns the traction control fully off, which is the best mode to use this car with on a dry conditions in a track and dry conditions in the in the summer on the road. For me, if you want the traction control on, by all means have it. If you know, I could I could ramble on about that for ages, but I like to drive it with the traction control off. If you need that traction control there because you're braking traction all the time, especially at high speeds, then you're driving like a lunatic. Good on you. Um, okay, now the next thing, exhaust on this car, guys. The exhaust is a bit of a damp squid. <laughs> squid. It's not the loudest exhaust in the world. Tell me if it's pumping the noise inside the cabin or not. I'm not 100% sure. If it is, that's the sort of thing that puts me off buying a car rather than makes me want to buy it. But the exhaust system could be a bit raspier, could be a bit more louder, could be a bit more fun for an M Performance car. It's a little bit dull. And if you can get the M Performance exhaust secondhand or something, that'd be a great up upgrade. Or if you want to go full Larry mode, you go with that Remus, you get a bit more burbles and stuff like that. But that can be a bit on the Larry side. So the exhaust is a little bit of a letdown. Um, should you go manual or DCT automatic? Well, you don't need me to tell you that, guys. If you're using it as a daily driver, the exhaust, uh, sorry, the clutch on this is quite long. In traffic, when you're constantly paddling, you might just want an, an automatic for that reason. Or you want, might want an automatic because it's got a little bit of extra performance that you're not gonna be able to change gear as fast as that gearbox. I would suggest, though, guys, if you're buying this car for fun, the six-speed manual is the way to go because it gives you so much more it just gives you so much more fun changing gears um, now moving on from whether or not you should get a manual or a automatic what is the gearbox like on this BMW M240 it's wobbly <laughs> that's not the Jonathan Ross lovely that's rubbery as in like rubber imagine getting a baseball bat sticking it in a bucket filling that bucket up with tennis balls and then filling the, the bucket of tennis balls with the baseball bat up with expanding foam and letting it dry. That's what this gear, BMW gearbox feels like. Very, very rubbery. You get used to it after a while. I'm even feeling it now. But on, in track conditions, it's not. you want that precise mechanical gearbox, not that rubbery thing going on. So the gearbox could be improved, but it's like almost like a BMW thing. <laughs> Okay, we've talked about driving modes, rev matching, the BMW iDrive system. One thing I like about this car in terms of the, um, I've got the Pro Nav, so I get the wide screen. I couldn't do with a little short screen. That'd be like having your iPhone the wrong way around or whatever. The great thing about it is I just, you press the map button and you're straight away, the map's up, which sounds obvious, but that's the thing that I use most of the time. Other than that, I tend to go to my vehicle and then vehicle status and look at my tire pressures because that's the kind of idiot I am. The rest of it, I don't even look at, um, but it's all reasonably good. You can check your tire pressures, you can uh, check all your you know, fuel, your coolant levels and engine oil levels and do checks and all that sort of stuff. 
that is wonderful. Um, bit old school with the old twisty dial thing, moving it around. I think, you know, it could be improved, but the car's a few years old now, so the, the latest G, G series is getting better with, all, with how you do all those controls. Okay, one other criticism of this car from a driving perspective. Oh, I've just got a, just another excuse to do a pull. Let's do a pull. And that's the speed limit. And I'm not going to run out of petrol if I'm not careful. So, very quick car. Oh, it's pinning me. One other criticism of this car is for a small coupe. I find I'm a bit... I'm a bit squashed with my leg room down here and it's making me go legs akimbo but I can't put the seat anywhere further back because I'm at full stretch to dip the clutch it's quite a long action on the clutch um, my right knee is resting against this hard plastic um, cup holder thing down here you're in the door card which after driving the car for an hour or so starts to really ache this side's got a little bit of padding in it which does actually help but it's all a bit compressed down there and when my my foot, when it sits on the little footrest to the left of the clutch, it's quite a distance to lift your foot up to get it back on the clutch. You could all, you could almost get stuck down there. It's all just a little bit tight, but then again, it is a coupe. One other major annoyance, or minor annoyance to me, is not having the electric seats. When you drop the seat height by pulling up on one of the random handles that you can never remember which one does which, it suddenly collapses the seat height and then I'm trying to get it back up again by bouncing in my seat unless there's some clever way of cranking it that I haven't worked out and in the end I have to get out of the car, stop, let it spring back up and get in and try again to lower it back down and if you get it wrong you've got to get back out again because I'm too big and heavy to bounce it back up that makes me mad <laughs> okay seating position we've done Generally, the seat feels quite comfy with a decent amount of um, bolster support. However, on track, if you're not up tight to the car, that bolster support is not enough, especially the top, to stop you sliding out. You end up grabbing hold of the steering wheel, trying to cling on for dear life. So it's not the best seat for uh, motorsport conditions. It's not bad though, guys. It's a reasonably com comfortable seat. And I've got the heated seat option, so in the winter, I can warm up my derriere, which is nice. Okay, so that is all my formal things that I wanted to cover on my notepad piece of paper fag packet. The M240, guys. I wanted a modern car that wasn't going to have loads of niggles and things wearing out and things that needed fixing imminently that I could have a lot of fun with that wasn't going to break the bank. A good interim car for me. And this M240 is definitely ticking the box. It's got just about... The most power that I would ever want. Don't quote me on that if I ever get something a bit more powerful. It's so powerful it struggles to put all that power down and that standard rear diff is perhaps a weakness of the, of the car. The biggest weakness of a car with this much power. Should BMW have put the limited slip differential in the car as standard? No, because it has to be compromised against the full M cars, doesn't it? It has to be. So you've got to accept there's going to be some limitations for, for half the price. But I tell you what, this will give an M2 on, on a track a run for its money if you've got a good set of tyres and fresh pads and uh, you know you're going to go for it. This will give an M2 a run for its money for sure. So should you get the M240 over an M140 or an M2 Comp? Well you get an M140 if you want a hatchback guys, you don't need me to tell you about that. That's not the, that's the obvious thing. <laughs> but should you get it over an M2 or an M2 Comp? Well, the M2 always worried me about the fact it just had the same engine as the M135, didn't have the full pedigree M car, you know, engine, the S engine, if you like. Um, I also really didn't like the interior of the standard M2, those seats and all that, it didn't feel special enough, even if it was improved, all the driving problems, you know, the suspension and the diff problems were solved. It wasn't enough for me of an improvement. I would probably have this over uh, an M2 because it'd be 10 grand less. The M2 Comp though, they've just sharpened up and fixed that. They put a proper M engine in there. It looks a bit nicer and the seats are a bit more special and the, the, the LCI2 interior. So for me, it's, it's a case of 
either the M240 or the M2 Comp and really budget takes care of that. I think the M240 is much better value for money. The, the prices on the M2, because it's such a popular car, they've stayed high. But really for half the price, this car is a, a real bargain with a few compromises around suspension and diff and handling and um, you know a bit of a dull exhaust. But essentially, for that rough 20 grand price tag, it's a lot of car for the money. I mean, that, that's phenomenal fun, isn't it? Who could not like that sort of power, guys? That is a phenomenal amount of fun. And I'm gonna end my review here and say, the M240 so far has been everything that I needed it to be. Side.